Hi guys, hello and welcome to another video. Fernando Munoz Bernal, uh, Fermue is the channel. Thank you all for watching today. Uh, I'm going to talk about something that a few people have been telling me. They've been quoting Western think tanks and they keep telling me that they think that I might be wrong about the things that I say. I often wonder why they think that they know more than I do. Uh, think tankies, and I have to thank uh, Daniel Dumber for inventing that wonderful name. These people, they, they just read reports, generally written by people who are not in China. Well, I live in China, and I see what is taking place here every day. These think tanks, they ask Western experts for inside opinions about what Chinese people are thinking. I simply cut out the middleman and just ask the Chinese people around me. These people, they work in a corporation that has an agenda. They get paid salaries and they have to meet editorial requirements. Me, as an independent, I can write or say whatever I want. Seriously, if I thought that there was a problem in China, either with the governments or, or, or the, the wealth distribution, the health system, the justice system, the education system, the police or crime or anything else for that matter, you'll be the first people to know. And I'll be the one telling you. And like hundreds of other bloggers inside China, we have a very different story to the thousands of anti-China bloggers that are currently outside of China and they've been there for quite a while. And it can't be that I'm doing this for money. If this place really did suck, it really, if it was collapsing, if it had none of the infrastructure and the lifestyle, the prices that I say that it has, what would I do? Stay here? Suffer? collect a bit of money from the government for lying about it, or instead just move to Thailand, to Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Philippines. They're all cheaper to live, and I can make a lot of money by turning on the Chinese government like some of these bloggers did. Of course, there are many people who don't trust me and think that I am paid by the government, but they're the same people who say that China is authoritarian, is dictatorial, is oppressive, and is bureaucratic or even corrupt. If it was all those things, how much do you think I would get paid to lie about it? <laughs> it would really have to be a great incentive, not something shot in an RV, wouldn't it? I even get, I even get people who tell me that I only do this for, for a visa. I live with my wife, who's Chinese, and I work here in China long enough and I met all the criteria to get a permanent residency, which is in the works right now. So why wouldn't China give me a visa? But even if they threaten me with expulsion or withholding a visa, what do you think any normal, rational, sane person would do in that circumstance? Of course it'd say, this shit, to hell with your visa. I can go and live in Thailand and have a great life there on the beach. No, we stay here because we like it. We say things that are positive about China on YouTube because they're true. And I invite people here. Many have been here. Many have come here and they have seen for themselves. I wouldn't trust much that Western media, Western think tanks, and even some Western academics put out as analysis on China. If you really want to know what's going on in China but don't have the time, the money, or the patience to come and see for yourself, just take a look at the description of this video and you'll find there's a couple of useful links. The first one is the State Council Information Office. That website tells you exactly what Xi Jinping is doing on a daily basis. It also gives out media briefs on what China is up to, what it has achieved, and what it's planning. So when people out there tell you that China is secretive, point them to this site. The search engines aren't really very good to find this information, unfortunately. But everything Western media says it is surprised about because China didn't tell them, it's almost certainly already there. They just aren't looking. Or maybe if they are, they're just not telling you. The other side is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It's another very good one. You can see there who's visiting China, which Chinese diplomats are visiting which countries. And you can then stop being surprised when Western media tells you that China is doing something great in a country that you've hardly ever heard of. Because I can assure you, China has been doing great things with smaller, less well-developed countries since 1949. Because that's what they do. That's who they are. Instead of relying on a media that is driven by U.S. influence, why don't look at media which tells you the truth? Something that might seem hard to accept, but something that's really quite different. Unless, of course, you are one of the 5% of Americans who trust the media. 5%. 
you could perhaps join the 80% of Chinese who trust their media. Did you know that in a survey of 46 different countries, the USA ranked last in trusting the media? And yet Americans still think that China is a threat to them because their media and their politicians, who they trust even less, have told them so. I've lived in China over 23 years, and I've been reading their media for most of that time. I check their sources, and now I even write for some of them. And I say this because now I know how they work. If I write an op-ed for a Chinese media group, I can't put a fact in there without linking the source. Here's an example. There's about 17 sources in a thousand-word article. Chinese media are like Western media of the old days. They check and triple check sources and they will not publish anything until they have finished doing so. Think tanks, on the other hand, they're not media. They often work on a hypothesis which is provided to them and then they seek solutions that leads to that hypothesis rather than seeking a genuine answer to whatever the problem is. Take an example. Say the Pentagon wants to get more funding for more ships for the Navy, right? So, a report is commissioned with the requirement for the experts to prove that China is aggressively building more ships. And that's exactly what they write. But they leave out all the fact that China isn't building landing crafts which would be necessary for an invasion. There's no invasion plans. China is building coastal defensive ships. So therefore, China isn't going to expand militarily. Its ships are the wrong kind of ship to do that. Now think about this. When was the last time you heard of a fleet of Chinese ships entering Australian or UK or European or even American waters? They haven't. They don't do that. But if you've read any media at all, you would know that all those regions have sent ships to China's shores. Why shouldn't China then build defensive ships when the most aggressive military nation in human history is creating military and intelligence alliances and sending those ships to China's waters? But the Pentagon gets the report that it needs and then Congress give it the funding that it says it needs and media reports that the U.S. now has to spend more because of China's aggression. Everyone wins in this plan, except the taxpayer, of course. You are, of course, entitled to disagree with my assessment and with my words. I'm willing to bet that my optimism and trust in Chinese media is far more accurate than the pessimism and the distrust provided by Western media and think tanks. But here's the real truth. We're only going to know this after time has passed. So keep watching and then see who's right and who's wrong. All right, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, give it a thumbs up, give it a like leave a comment, share, and uh, well, if you want to support the work that I do, make sure to hit the link in the description down below to buy me a cup of coffee. And until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.